Today's lesson is about reconciling bank statements and comes from the basic QBO certification course. But before we get into today's lesson, if you are an accounting professional in need of help getting your QBO Pro Advisor certification, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do. So if that's of interest to you, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell to get notified every time we upload a new video. With that, let's get started. Today we're going to be walking through exercise 5.4, reconciling a checking account. If you would like a copy of today's exercise so you can follow along, click the link in the description to find out how you can access our practice library. You'll also find a link there about our full certification courses. So here's the scenario. As a bookkeeper, your primary responsibility is to ensure all financial transactions are categorized correctly and match the flow of money into and out of the bank. Each month, you will need to use the statement provided by the bank to confirm that all transactions have been correctly added to and categorized in QuickBooks Online. So to do this, we're going to log into the sample company. Hopefully you know how to get to the sample company. If you don't, uh, there's a link below that talks about you can get a, a document, everything you ever wanted to know about ProAdvisor uh, Pro Advisor certification. And uh, there's instructions in there. Uh, Intuit provides this amazing sample company for us to be able to learn the product and test things in it. So um, you'll need to access that in order to do this exercise. Um, so from the left nav bar, you're going to click banking and then select banking right here. Now, if you have already done exercise 5.1, processing bank feeds, what you're going to see is a little bit different here. So, but don't worry about that. When we get to the reconcile, I'll show you what the differences are. Um, I'm getting this little, your bank connection is all set. Remember, this is just a sample company. It's this, so there's going to be a lot of things that we have to just kind of close uh, that you won't see in a real company. So here we have our different tiles, and these tiles each indicate a bank account that is connected to QuickBooks Online. For this exercise, we're just going to be focusing on the checking account, and that's already selected here. You can tell that because it's blue. And there are a lot of ways that you can start a reconciliation. What I do in, the, in this exercise is, uh, and what I like to do in real life, just because I, I don't know, I find it easier, is to from here, click go to a bank register right over here. And then up at the top, I'm going to click reconcile. And so if you've been following along in the exercise, that is, we've gone through step five. You'll notice here that there is an ending balance that's currently in the checking account. If you have it, if you see a different account, if you see a different number there, and, and uh, if you're following along in the exercise, you will see a different number on the exercise. Don't worry about it. This is still going to work out, I promise. So then just click the green reconcile button. These next couple of screens are only because you're in the sample company. You're not going to see these in real life after the first time you connect it, so don't worry about that. We're just going to click through, and here we are um, getting started. This is our main reconcile screen, and we are now at uh, step eight. Uh, actually, right above step eight, it says use the sample uh, bank statement at the end of this exercise to complete the reconciliation. Let me just show you what that means. Okay, so right here, the very last page of the document is a sample bank statement. Now, every bank will provide you with a bank statement. At, uh, it's usually at the end of the month. Sometimes they have weird schedules, but once a month, at least, that you will get a bank statement. And they all look different. Uh, all of the information will be in a different place, but uh, they all have the same information. So the one that you're going to get in real life, you just want to make sure that um, you know where to find the different information. Uh, for this exercise, we're going to rely heavily on this document here at the very end of the exercise, so make sure you have that. Um, as you can see, the ending balance is $3,890.89, so that's what I'm going to enter here as my ending balance, 3890 and then for the ending date, 
you're going to put in the last day of the previous month. Now I'm filming this in September 2021, so that means I'm going to put in the last day of August 2021, which is 831. But whenever you're watching this, then just it follow along and just put in the date of the last month and this will still work. So uh, now I'm just going to click start reconciling. And looking back at my exercise, I um, just completed, let's see. All right, so that was step nine using the last date of the previous month. And uh, here we are. Now, if you have, if you are doing this exercise immediately following at doing exercise 5.1, which is another video, um, then you will see blue check marks over here on the right hand side um, in the very, very right hand column. Let me just close this out. And this one too, we just get all these little messages. Okay. Oh my goodness, keeps going. All right. So all in these blue check marks mean that it has been it has cleared and they'll show up if you've done if you've processed your uh, through your bank feeds. But in this case, we haven't done that exercise before. I'm just starting fresh. So I don't have those blue check marks um, there. Um, so you'll see a little bit different there. Also, I wanted to point out this right here, this number, $1,109.11, that is the difference between the beginning balance of the reconciliation and the statement ending balance that we put in. So that's the, in, the difference. And so as we go along and we check these off, the goal of the reconciliation is for this difference to be zero. That is our ultimate goal. That's what we're hoping is that what we've checked off is the same or is the same as what the bank has as having cleared. OK, so that's our goal today. Um, let's see what else in uh, step 11 it says note the uh, note the difference. That's what I just mentioned. The number that you see here, remember, so we see one. I'm seeing 1,109. You may see something different. The exercise will see something different. What the difference is, don't worry about it. Um, this exercise is going to still work. All right. So I mentioned every bank has a slightly different, uh, slightly different bank statement. I mentioned that you want to begin by unchecking all of the blue check marks if necessary. I don't have any, so um, but I'll just show you real quick how that's done. Is in this column right here. If you check the very top circle, then you're going to select. You have to turn on all of the check marks first. So I'm going to turn them all on. And then I'm going to turn them all off. OK, so if you're starting this exercise, you have blue check marks. Make sure that you uncheck them first and then um, then proceed with the exercise. I do it that way. I just I find it a lot easier. All right. So now we're going to go and we are going to start reconciling. All right. So I am on step 13. It says, using the, sa the sample statement, complete the following, find and check all of the matching deposits. Okay, so here's my bank statement. Here are my deposits. Okay, and so I'm just going to go through and I'm going to check them all. So there's 175, uh, scrolling down, 8640, 225, 105. 694 and 337.50. Okay. All right. So now I have checked all of my deposits. The next thing we have to do says find and check all of the checks. Now you can sort by the type of um, the type of transaction. If I wanted to get group all of the checks together, or if I wanted to use the reference number, which is the check number, I could do that. Um, I'm not going to, but if you wanted to, you could just click type up at the uh, at the top of the column uh, to make it a little easier. But for me, I'm just going to go through and um, I'm just going to find them. Okay, so number two is right here Mahoney Mugs 1808 mm -hmm. and number four is 
is right here, Chen's Gas and Oil, 54.55. The next one is number 5, 6201. Number 12, which is $55. All right, and then number 69 is actually not in the list anywhere. So, um, but if you look carefully, you will find that there is a check for $100. It's right here. There's a check for $100, um, and it's made out to Tony, Ron, Don, Wu, whoever that is, okay? So we can be fairly certain that this is the check we're looking for, and I can actually add the number 69 to it. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to hit type 69 and then save. Okay, so now 69 is in there. Where did it go? Right there. And I'm just going to check it right here. Okay, now in real life, you probably uh, would want to confirm that that's actually the check that was missing the number. A lot of banks will have a um, like a scan of the check to make sure that's the one. Um, but for the purposes of that, this exercise, that's all you need to do. And then the last one here is to do check number uh, 70. So 185. Okay, and then we're going to go back again. Okay, so we have done... Uh, note that one check is missing a check number. Edit, we did that. Find and check the remaining debits. Again, you can sort this if you want. Here is my list of uh, debits, all the things that came out of the account, and I'm just going to go through and check those off. So here's $300, $250. All right, now this one is kind of interesting. So here's one that is $38.58 and one that is $38.40. Um, if you look at the bank statement, the correct one, and one thing I always tell my students is the bank is always right. So if there's any question, it's always the bank that's right. And so you're gonna make the change in QuickBooks Online. So I'm gonna go through and um, I'm looking, okay, so $38.50, that is the one that's correct right here. So you may wanna ask yourself, well, why is there that one for $38.40? Well, what might have happened, what I suspect happened, is that somebody entered it manually. They typed it in QuickBooks Online for $38.40, and then they processed the bank transaction, and the bank transaction came across at $38.50, so it didn't match, and because it didn't match, they clicked Add instead, uh, instead of trying to find another match, and so now they have those two records. And that's how you end up with duplicates in uh, QuickBooks Online. So if this were a real situation, you would want to go back and investigate and find out, like, you know, what happened here. Maybe, probably you have to avoid this one, um, but you'd have to figure that out. And that for the purposes of this exercise, we're just going to ignore it. So don't worry about that. All right, so that is, um, so that's that one. We're gonna go back to our uh, bank statement, 8909, dun, 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 250, and 10809, and $24.38. Now, um, in the previous exercise, if you did exercise 5.1 before doing this, you know that there is a transaction in here for Hicks Hardware that doesn't match the bank. It's off by two cents, and you'll you see that reflected here in the bank statement. If you did the previous exercise, you changed it, so you're going to see the correct number here. If you did not do that exercise before you're doing this exercise right here, then you want to go ahead and change it now. And you can do that in the same way we added the check number, just by clicking it and then changing the amount. Okay, so I'm just gonna change it to 2438 because that's what my bank statement says. And I'm gonna go ahead and check it off. 2438, 1999, 566, 5241, I'm sorry, 5214, 900, 
$2.15.66 and $3.86. And look what happened. I got a zero difference and I got the green check mark. This is the goal. I'm such a nerd. I just love my green check marks. This is the goal. This is what we're aiming for. So if you missed something, go back and rewind this video, read the exercise carefully so that you know what you're looking for. Um, and this is what you're going to be doing every month as a bookkeeper. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish now, finish now. Say it says, I reconciled this account, yay! I can at this point do um, a view of reconciliation record or view the reconciliation report. Um, I don't know why you would ever want to do that, but you can and it's on the test. So, so um, anyway, that's it. We're going to click done and we're done with our exercise for today. See you next time.